If Reality Check Radio enriches your day in life, support us to keep bringing you the content, voices, perspectives, and the dose of reality you won't get anywhere else. Visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate. Gary Moller is back with my hair test results. We're going to take a deep dive into what these results mean, how we can correct any issues, and what the next steps are. As I said before, I'm sharing this health journey with you all so you can see what a positive impact looking after your own health can be and the interest that you have in your own lives. Gary's itching to go and he joins me now. Welcome back to The Crunch, Gary. Uh, It's a pleasure to have you here. Last time we spoke, we were going to go and get a a hair test uh, to, to find out all the elements that are coming out of my body or not coming out of my body. And um, I thought it'd be an opportune time to update the listeners on what that showed and what that means for me and uh, tell you about some stuff that you recommended uh, during the Christmas New Year break and the results of that. So uh, it's a good pleasure to have you back on The Crunch. Well, it's a real pleasure, Cam. I'd like to start by just um, uh, asking you a question, getting your permission. The first thing is is that... um, Cam, we are going to be talking about medical-related matters. Yep. And it's we may delve into some uh, personal things. Yep. And you need to be comfortable with sharing this with uh, the public, with your listeners. Yep. Um, so I want your permission to... Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, my, I've been pretty public about my yes. journey of the recovery from my stroke. Uh, and open about the, some of the medications and side effects and things like that. And I think it's uh, sure. important for listeners to understand the full picture uh, so that they can, you know, wonder about their own situation and and start to question, you know, whether or not they're on correct medications or there's something that they can do that seems to be really simple to actually fix and correct a few things. So, yeah, I've got no problems at all sharing that information. I think that... Yes. Uh, it's educational for the listeners, and uh, and I've, I've got no secrets. Of course. Uh, that's wonderful. And I just wanted to make sure that that's absolutely clear. And uh, the other thing, Cam, which uh, listeners need to be aware, is that we're talking about Cameron Slater. Mm-hmm. And when we're talking about perhaps um, the merits or whatever of changing medication, of perhaps introducing other therapies, mm-hmm. Uh, for the listeners, I'm not expecting them to go and do the same for themselves. No, each each person has to do their own research, uh, you know, look up their own medications, and consult a professional, uh, you know, health practitioner to ensure that they're actually not endangering themselves. That's um, right. So you know, I'm uh, whatever recommendations that you come up with here, Gary. I'll be sharing that with my GP. I've trained her nicely. She knows that I go and do these sorts of things and we always work in conjunction with that. And I'm putting in place things to monitor as well. You know, I've got a uh, one of those uh, wrist blood pressure testing devices. I'm te- checking my blood pressure to see that there's any changes and any changes that we make. I'm making sure I'm on top of that sort of thing. That's what people should do. They, they need to take an interest in their own health because nobody else is going to do that. And if they don't do that, then they'll end up in an emergency situation, and you don't, you, you can't guarantee what the outcomes are going to be when it's an emergency situation. Well, where shall we start? I think it's uh, great we've clarified things. Uh, this test that uh, we are discussing was done in uh, December. Yep. And uh, you've had a number of um, a number of weeks where you have uh, steadily and faithfully plugged away. Um, an absolutely model patient, I must add. <laughs> Uh, I'm delighted to hear that. Um, perhaps we should start with blood pressures. And how are you feeling? Are you feeling okay? Well, are just, you feeling well? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling fantastic. Um, just for the listeners' benefit, the, Gary recommended that I start making up his famous citrus peel drink. Um, we'll explain why why you suggested that. And that came out of the results, the test results that we had. And there were some things that maybe we needed to cleanse or clean up. Um, But I'll tell you what, uh, you know, over the uh, New Year period, and especially in January, I've met up with a few people in person. They're saying, gee, Cam, what have you done? Like, your skin is looking really good. 
your eyes are really bright, you look like you're full of energy and all of this sort of thing. And uh, so the only thing that I've done over that Christmas New Year period is uh, drink copious quantities of your citrus peel drink. And, uh, you know, when you told me to, to to make this up and I looked at the recipe and looked at the things that are required, I sat there and thought, oh, good grief, you know, I'm, I'm a manly man. I'm, I'm not the kind of person who would suck on lemons or mm. um, drink dandelion and milk thistle tea or, or lemon and ginger. I'm just not a green tea drink, none of that, right? But mm. the drink was actually very pleasant. It's not bitter at all, even though it's got a, a whole lemon in it. And uh, and eating the uh, the lemon peel, which you suggested that I do as I drink through it and have a couple of slices a day of the lemon peel, was not unpleasant. It wasn't bitter. It, it was nice. Um, and so, you know, I quite, kind of do it all the time, especially on the hot days at the moment uh, here in Auckland, you know, approaching 30 degrees. That drink and a, and a slice of the lemon chilled in the fridge uh, is just just delightful and really tasty and uh it's something that you know, i've changed into my diet and 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 i think it's made huge improvements well here in w- at wellington approaching 20 degrees i must say i enjoy having one of those lemon drinks as well mm. um, now i do, i went the next step and i and i bought the sujon black currant powder yes. um you know but and it, you know what it, it's actually doesn't really taste you think it might taste like ribena it doesn't hmm. um the lemon taste um comes through more than the than the black currant taste but but i added the the sujon black currant into into my, you know i get bottled water it's cheap as chips you, know, you can buy six bottles for about three bucks from the supermarket or, th- or three dollars fifty if it's on you know something like that on special and i just you know pour uh, a liter and a half into a jug and put all the ingredients and mix all that up and everything and, and leave it in the fridge overnight before I start drinking it. So, you know, it's working. Okay. I well, think it's working. <laughs> I well, I well, Cam, I haven't seen you for a couple of months now. And mm. maybe it's the filter on the camera, but yeah, uh, no you, filters here. You do look you do look uh in re- you look in definitely better health, I think perhaps a bit of the darkness under the eyes. I can't really see any. I think you're looking pretty pretty good for a 55 year old. Yep. Um, the medication you're on. Yep. Uh, can we just go over that? Um, sure. You're taking um, essentially it's focusing on uh, cardiovascular, preventing yeah, stroke it, and heart attack. Yep. Um, these were so, the things that they prescribed yep. after I had my stroke to get my blood pressure yes. under control and those sorts of things. Yeah, yes. and then of course I'm also doing five kilometer walks every day as well. So, yes, um, which yeah, is I'm, wonderful. Yeah, um, as a, you're a model patient, and I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> now, well, I just want my health to be good because if you don't have your health, well, you've got nothing. I think um, you've heard this me say this before, but let food be thy medicine, mm. and body heal thyself. Yeah, and uh, the medication you're on may be beneficial in managing yes. whatever the condition is, but it is not going to cure anything. You are going to cure yourself, uh, which is what you have been um, in the process of doing, which is wonderful. And ultimately, if you do the job right, you will be bringing the um, health and vitality in underneath the medication And ultimately, the need for the medication will decrease to the point where you, with um, the cooperation of your doctor, though ultimately you are the decision maker on this, you will be able to remove each medication one by one to the point where you are completely medication free and you just get on with life. Now, I'll make one point as well. You're in your mid 50s. Yep. Congratulations. Now, you are genetically programmed. This is your genes. Your genes are there to serve you faithfully until around about 110 years of age. Yeah, so I'm halfway there. Yeah, you're halfway there. Now, the question I want you to, the, the mental exercise is, what do you think about taking all of these drugs for the next half of your life? Yeah, I'm I mean, not very. Is I'm it not, I'm not, really? Yeah, I'm not really not really keen on that because you know you well, get side effects with these drugs, and I'm not sure 
for another, even if let's just say another 20 years, right? Let's say I get another 20 years. I don't want to be taking um, yep. this cocktail of drugs for another 20 years. I want to actually get those down to almost nothing. Okay. Now, so all of the drugs you're on, and there's um, atavastatin, uh, metarazerapine, uh, clopidarol, losartan, and uh, chlorodine. Or, uh, don't worry about the pronunciation. I just get completely tongue-tied with all of them. But basically, you're, you're on those medications, and each one of them comes with a long list of side effects. If it is a relatively recent drug, it will have a shorter list of side effects. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, usually a lot shorter because it takes 10 to 20 years of the drug being out on the market for us to truly know mm. all of the side effects from them because we're talking about human years as opposed to, say, rat years from those original yep. um, lab studies. So um, it, it often is the case that an older drug will have a longer list than the new one. But don't be fooled. The new one once you give it enough time, may have just as long a list. Yep. Now, if each drug has got, say, 20 different side effects, some serious, some minor, hey, I don't think any of them are minor, by the way, but let's call them minor. If you then combine four or five drugs together, which have never had to be tested together before going on the market, they're only tested on their own, and you combine them all together, you would need a supercomputer to figure out all of the possible interactions, most of which are probably unknown. Yeah, now, there's, there's obvious ones, you know, like like the, um, yeah, yes. I can't say it either. Um, <laughs> the the uh, chlorotelidone, for example, when they yeah. originally prescribed that for me, I ended up with swollen um, legs, calf muscles, uh, feet, you know, like twice the size of my of my normal feet. I said mm. to the doctor, "What's going on here?" Oh, I don't know. So mm. I went and did some research, found out that edema is one of the major side effects of the chlorotelidone, and then we um, we reduced the dosage. The other side effect of that drug too was it made my gums grow up over my teeth. Mm. You know, and uh, that's very uncomfortable, very painful. And when you're on blood thinners as well, brushing your teeth becomes a, a bloodbath. You know. Um, normally. So I'm the one who did the research on that. We talked to my doctor and said, well, what are we going to do? We reduced it. Now that's gone back to normal. But if it's got that side effect, I don't want it in me, right? I, I want to be in, get myself to a point where I can remove those drugs because of the obvious side effects. And then there's, as you say, the not obvious side effects that you may not be aware of until there's a catastrophe. Yeah. And, and then there's all of the incomprehensible interactions where you layer one drug on top of another. Yeah, absolutely. And we, can, we can never truly understand uh, the impact of that. It's it's a very difficult thing. Um, Cam, I can tell you that the best predictor for a, a long, healthy, productive life, particularly as we get older, is the absence of the need for medication. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you if you go and look at all the longevity studies, yeah, uh, you can see there are certain common factors like um, their diet, their exercise, getting yeah. out into fresh air, um, a sense of um, belonging, uh, mm. being part of a community, having p a purpose that is above oneself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, rather than being narcissistic, being outward looking. Yeah. Uh, involved in their community and so on and so on. Okay, so there are all of those, but one of the uh, factors that is often overlooked, almost ignored, is that none of these people are on long term medication mm. okay? because they well for a start they don't need it, yeah. but they're usually living in parts of the world where they won't have access to it anyway. Mm. Okay, so that's um. Uh, a really, I, I've always found that really fascinating. And what highlighted that to me was um, uh, health professionals who work in aged care, end of life, they know that if you take the patient off their medication, they live longer. Mm. Okay, so that often says something. If you want to end somebody's life a little bit sooner, you bump the meds up. Okay, you don't take them off it. So. Yeah. I want you to just sort of um, 
think about that for a while. So for the next 55 years yeah. of Cam Slater's life, I think we should get him to a point where he's so healthy that there's no need for any drugs. Okay? Sounds, now, sounds good to me. Now, I'm being very careful about how I'm saying this. I'm yep. saying that we are going to remove the need, okay? Mm. It doesn't mean that you just throw the drugs away, Yeah. okay? Um, well, actually, you know, I, I always said to the doctors, you know, why do I need this drug? Yep. Oh, well, if you don't take that, you'll die or or whatever. They give you a reason. So, oh. no, but what's the, what's the symptom? What, what We're only treating symptoms here. What's the underlying cause of this? And it's like my little enigma with potassium. Yep. You know, I've seen endocrinologists, various different specialists, they all, you know, uh, uh, have declared it um, to be NFI, which means they've got no effing idea what it is that's causing it. Well, well, that's not helpful. They just say keep taking supplements. Mm. Well, most people don't need to take supplements for um, potassium, so why do I? And, and that's the question that I have, and it's the, the riddle, the enigma that has defeated me thus far, which is why I thought the hair test would be um, give us yes. a good indicator. Well, there is. Um, so we've got Cam's hair tissue analysis on screen. Yep. I'm going to describe it a little bit. Sure. Now, first of all, we have what is called a reference range. In other words, a person in perfect health, and homeopaths understand this, yep. is yep. that if you've got perfect homeostasis within a cell, there cannot be the existence of disease, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when we and when we look at hair tissue analyses of healthy people, people who are disease free, their hair tissue test is more or less all of the nutrients um, like calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, uh, and so on, are within what is called an ideal or reference range. It, there's a balance, and, isn't there, that we've got to got to look yeah, towards. And then some of these things come in pairs, don't they? They work together. Well, Everything in the universe operates on yin yang, black, white, hot, cold, positive, negative, male, female, um, conservative, liberal. If there's darkness, there must be light. If mm. there's heat, there must be cold. And if you have too much of one and too little of another, you end up with imbalance and dysfunction. And let's think of like politics. If you have a political party that has 60% uh, of the vote, you run the risk of a dictatorship. Yes. Whereas the perfect democracy is where they have 51% of the vote. Yes. And if you think also in, say, a relationship between two people, you don't want a very strong person and a very weak person. Otherwise, you end up with an abusive relationship. Now, we have the same right down to the atomic level. In fact, down to light, matter. If there is matter, there must be antimatter, even if we haven't found it. Mm -hmm. This is the rule of the universe. And by the way, if you want to destroy and confuse, what you do is, for example, you destroy the distinction between a man and a woman, for example, yeah. and this and that. But it's um, You can actually apply science to what is going on in society. It's very, yeah. very fascinating. Now, anyway, but we won't di di digress. So if we're looking at CAMS and we are looking at CAMS hair tissue test, we can see he's only got a couple of nutrients that are within the reference range or within the ideal. Mm. And there are a number of ones which are outside of the ideal and are in fact too low or too high. Now, th there's some fascinating things here. The pattern that I'm looking at, Cam, yeah. is in fact the pattern of somebody who is probably not eating much in the way of red meat. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the first thing that, and but we're looking at them. This is historic. You may be eating red meat right now, but uh, during the last year or so, it looks to me like you have been on a... Um, a, a low red meat, probably low cholesterol diet. Okay. Right. Yep. Now, and that's because your iron is incredibly low, as is copper, manganese, 
zinc, chromium, and selenium. Yeah. And when we look at those foods, uh, let's look at those nutrients, and we look at the main, most bioavailable food sources, that is things like red meat and also um, other sources, um, organ meat, and yeah. things like green lip mussels, clams, oysters, quinoa, yeah. you know, those okay. sorts yep. of things. Yep. Yeah. Quite fascinating to see that. Um, so that's the first observation. So I should, so I I should eat more black pudding then? And have liver once a week. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, lamb thrive once a week would be absolutely amazing, wonderful. And uh, have you been doing that, Cam? No, I haven't. But uh, I do right. like black pudding. So, you know, perhaps I can get some black pudding and have that for breakfast or something. Um, well, I had black pudding uh, served up for dinner last night. Oh, I love it. And uh, I had um, some of the leftover earlier today, okay? There's and, never uh, any leftover of black pudding for me. Gary. Well, maybe your reptilian subconscious <laughs> brain is saying, I need it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And that's because you're so incredibly low. Yeah. Um, just to give readers that Cam's iron is 0 0.6 when it should be around about 3.5. Yeah. It doesn't go much lower. I don't, it's just about as low as it can go. Yeah. Maybe it's all those bleeding gums. Could okay. Be. <laughs> Combined with a diet of, um, you know, um, uh, vegetable forms of iron are far less bioavailable mm. than red meat, venison, black pudding, um, liver. Basically, the redder, the better. Um, yeah. That would be a general rule of thumb for Cam Slater. Lots of red meat, and that will also provide copper. Uh, by the way, copper is found in green lip mussels. Yeah. That's um, the uh, copper oxide is green, and mollusks, um, mussels use copper instead of iron for oxygen transport and storage. So yeah. that's why they are a great source of uh, copper. Okay, think of yep. uh, think of power. Power is so green, it almost looks black. Mm. And that's the copper oxide in it. Or yeah, the... I love power. Power is delicious. Yeah. And again, your subconscious is pro probably saying, Cam, I need more copper. Mm. Now, um, if we go to another, so I'm going to go to another website. These are all available on my website, garymoller.com. And you can find like the citrus recipe on yep. GaryMoller.com. And I've just updated that this morning um, to be um, a little more user friendly. Now, if we look at, for example, copper, mm -hmm. and copper in Kim's case is very, very low. Now, we look at the functions of copper, and it says structure of blood vessels aorta and heart muscle. It is also necessary for hemoglobin, okay, mm. oxygen transport and storage. It is also necessary for the maintenance of the myelin sheath. If there is a copper deficiency or a copper excess, by the way, then the myelin sheath will be weak, which means that uh, a person with weak myelin may be very prone to conditions like concussion, mm -hmm. okay, and fail to recover from a brain injury. Mm -hmm. Now, the structure of blood vessels. Now, just think about this. If you want to stop blood vessels from bursting and breaking, yep. you need copper, but you also need zinc with it. Yeah. So when we look at um, uh, your hair tissue test, we go to zinc. Your zinc is 12 when it should be 20 to 24. Yeah. Now, when we go and look at the roles and functions of zinc, which I'm going to do now, mm. um, Cam and I have the benefit in that we're looking at this on a screen. But So I'm going to keep describing this for the yeah. listeners. Now, first of all, you will see, again, the foods that are high. And these are foods when people are going heart healthy, following the... Now, out of date, heart healthy guidelines. Yep. <laughs> You're cutting out the very foods. So, oysters, herrings, beef, lamb, uh, pork, liver. Uh, okay. Those are the main ones that are 
uh, great sources of zinc. Of course, zinc is found in nuts and seeds and so on, but yep. it's not so bioavailable. The benefit of an animal is that they will eat vast volumes of these things and concentrate these nutrients for you, a human being. Now, what you will see is, look at this. It is important for the maintenance of artery walls, all of your blood vessels and that, but also your intestinal walls, along with copper, okay? So a lot of these things are really important for yep. um, the functioning of the brain and so on and so on. And it is also essential for the production of the male hormones, um, which gives a person strength and fortitude. The willingness to go to their death without a quiver of fear. If somebody is lacking zinc, then there is a possibility, a likelihood that they can't produce the hormones and neurotransmitters to um, prevent conditions like anxiety and depression. Really important. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at um, your hair tissue test, we can see you're lacking um, zinc and you're lacking copper. Straight away, two things which says your um, connective tissue is going to be weak. Now, for the last few months, you've been taking some supplementation, which is providing some of these nutrients. Yep. So we're going to step it up now because we haven't really had a proper discussion on this, Cam. No. Okay, but um, guess what? What's good for your arteries is good for your hair, skin and nails. And so if somebody is healthy, if they've got nice strong arteries, if they've got a good, a healthy digestive tract, well, why don't we look at their hair, skin and nails? If mm. somebody looks healthy, then they're probably healthy on the inside. And in fact, if somebody is not healthy on the inside, there's no way they can look healthy on the outside. So when I'm looking at you, Cam looks healthier. His skin looks better. So maybe he's healthier on the inside as well. And Going by your reports, to me, it sounds like you are making progress. Oh, now, sorry, can we side go back just one thing? Your blood pressures. What's yep. been going on with your blood pressures? You have been um, obsessively monitoring them. And yep. could you share that with the uh, listeners? Yeah, so, you know, I you have a, a regime, a schedule, um, for people to monitor their blood pressure, and you can go and pick up a, a little wrist um, blood pressure uh, monitor. Uh, Omron, I think, is the is the brand that I've got. It's a little one that clips onto your wrist. It takes you know thirty seconds to do a blood pressure test. Uh, you recommend doing blood pressure as soon as you wake up, uh, then breakfast, then ten o'clock, three o'clock, seven o'clock, and then bed. So you're monitoring it throughout the day. Um, once you've got a few days uh, under your belt, then you can, you know, maybe every fifth day or whatever, just check it, see where you're going. But my blood pressure is uh, pretty stable now. Uh, definitely uh, not anywhere near what it was like when I had my stroke. Mm. Um, and, you know, is sitting even, even after I've done a five kilometre walk uh, and then had breakfast. Uh, my blood pressure uh, is often around 120, uh, 122, something like that, over 70. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with where the blood pressure is at, and, and, and that gives me an indication that maybe I need to now uh, present all this information to my GP and say, right, what are we going to do about these blood pressure medications? Because they're artificially holding things low, and it's not reaching a normal balance, uh, and a normal balance is what we're after. They, they may be. And I'll, I'll just point out that the wrist type blood pressure monitor, so long as uh, my recommendation is that you use an Omron. Mm -hmm. Now, an Omron is it's made by a company that supplies doctors and it is accurate. It's within a few points of your doctor's blood pressure monitor. Uh, wrist type one is convenient. You can carry it around with you and you can slip it onto your wrist um, at a moment's notice and do so discreetly and get real life readings. Uh, the thing about they're only about, they're only about one hundred and thirty dollars too, so they're not a lot of money. They're um, lifesavers. They yeah. save lives. It's one hundred and thirty dollars, extremely well spent. Every 
family should have one. Yeah. Okay. Now, so you get these readings and you get a cluster of readings. There is the saying, uh, excuse me um, for plagiarizing a little, but it is one swallow does not make for a summer. Mm -hmm. One blood pressure reading at your doctor's surgery is not a diagnosis. No. You've got to have a whole flock of them before you can declare or make a conclusion. So that's why Cam has obsessively taken clusters of blood pressure so he can get a real-time record of how dynamic his blood pressure is. Now, a blood pressure of 120 over 80, plus or minus, um, you know, 10 or so points up and down, which varies during the day on how stressed you are, whether you're exercising, whether you're sitting or standing and so on, but 120 over 80. Hey, if it's 120 over 80, uh, pop the corks, Cam, okay? Mm. That's fantastic, wonderful. Now, here's the next thing. I have found in many cases the body habituates to many of these blood pressure drugs. In other words, as the months turn into years, the blood pressure medication is not really doing much anyway. So this is what um, uh, you need to do. Your blood pressure now, Cam, we've been able to demonstrate is consistently within extremely healthy, safe zones. Yeah, You haven't been getting any dangerous peaks and also dangerous lows. Look, blood pressure can be too low. That, yes. that, can, be, that can be terrible as well. Okay, so you are, you've got healthy blood pressure. So it really then begs the question, what would happen if Cam were to progressively titrate his blood pressure medications one at a time downwards? Now, if you while you're doing that, and you need to you need to go and talk to your doctor and put this as a proposal. Here's the plan, yeah. okay? What you do, you go to your doctor and you say um, politely, respectfully, um, I want to wean myself off all of my medications, but I want to do so responsibly and safely. I want to pick each drug in order of in some kind of hierarchy and i want to over the the next month titrate that drug downwards in other words you might go from two pills to one pill per yeah. day and then you get a razor and you chop that pill in half most of them are designed so you can break them in half yeah and you do that for another week and while you're doing that you must be monitoring, actively monitoring your blood pressure with that convenient and accurate wrist type blood pressure monitor. Okay. Yep. And what you're wanting to do is to keep the blood pressure within uh, certain ranges that you've been able to be in over the last few months. In other words, 120 over 80, um, if it gets up to 140, 145 over, say, 95 then you'd start to be a bit concerned. Yeah. Okay. But if you're staying um, within that range, then, you know, it's all peachy creamy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you, you get it down and you might even go to a quarter of a pill. You know, you can even go yeah. down to a grain. And then when that's done, you then move on to the next drug. And then you titrate that downwards and you go through that exercise of monitoring and monitoring and you just keep going. Now, you also keep stepping up the nutrition, the lifestyle-based strategies, which you keep bringing in underneath the medication. Mm. So what you are doing is you are progressively removing the need for the drugs. Yeah. Okay. And, and the supplements. At, well, the supplements you you do you you're actually bumping them up while you're doing this. Yes. Okay. Well, you're getting those nutrients through yep. your food um, yes. and in a more yep. bioavailable manner rather than just taking some yep. supplement so, pills so or something your, like that. Oh, look, supplements are supplements. They mm. are supplementary to a good diet. If somebody is not attending to their diet and saying, Gary, give me a whole lot of supplements, I'll say, well, I'm not really happy about that. I would prefer 
that so so you have the you have the the wonderful dietary changes uh, which provide that um, that concrete foundational base. Yeah. And then the supplements are supplementary. You put those on top because and and what the supplements do is that we know how big a dose is in each supplement. So it means that if we if we really have to give Cam extra copper, first of all, we want to make sure that he's got foods that have got copper in them, bioavailable copper. Uh, but during that loading period, we will bring in some extra bioavailable copper, and we know exactly how many milligrams he's, we're giving. Mm -hmm. But the more important thing is, is that about four to six months after we do all of this, we repeat the hair tissue test yeah. so that we can see whether or not we're on track. We want to make sure that we don't overshoot and we need to know whether or not we're undershooting. The other thing is, sometimes when you put things in, it brings other things out. Yeah. Mysteries are sometimes solved. Okay? Yeah. So um, th this is quite fascinating. Um, now, can I just ask you, Cam? Yeah. Over the last year, prior to us having our first discussions on this, were you on a cholesterol-lowering diet? Were you restricting things like eggs, meat, um, those sorts of things. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that I was. Mm -hmm. I certainly, I usually have two to three eggs every morning, so that's that's a no on that. Um, I wasn't restricting that. <laughs> yes. uh, I have eaten a lot less red meat than I normally do because uh, the yeah. last year I haven't had uh, the time, uh, you know, for various different reasons to go hunting. I prefer my meat to be on the hoof naturally rather than. I can't really buy meat from the supermarket because I just don't like it. Um, so, you know, I, I usually eat a lot of venison uh, and you know, I'd finished eating uh, the wild bull that took me two years to eat um, my way oh, through. Um, but, you know, I got over 500 kilos of meat out of that bull. So it was the most delicious meat I've ever had. But, yeah, I mean, I need to add more red meat into my diet and I need to be more mindful of that. And I've resorted to eating a lot of chicken because it's a lot cheaper, but also it's easier to, to prepare and get ready. Um, you know, I'm cooking for myself. So going out and buying big steaks and stuff like that, it's, it hasn't, hasn't been done. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not been a good diet, um, I'd imagine, but um, I've kept up things like eggs and, you know, I hadn't actually had a lot of bacon either, um, but certainly not deliberately uh, on a cholesterol lowering diet. Um, and, you know, from my recent blood tests that I had, my cholesterol is quite low anyway. So um, it's not can you something. Share, can you share what, um, just yeah, give us sure. the total I'll just, cholesterol. Just, yeah, just I'll, the I'll just bring it up in my little yeah. app from the doctor. So uh, my cholesterol was 3.0. Yes, MM and that's, that's on, really. and while on a cholesterol lowering drug. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes. Uh, so that's the total. Do you want yep. the HDL and the LDL? No, don't worry. We don't want okay. to come that. We'll yeah. keep it simple at yeah. this point. So 3.0. Um, yeah. 3.0. Now, first of all, uh, for listeners, I would urge you to go to my website, garymoller.com, scroll down the article, several articles, to an article about the meat eaters angiogram and read it carefully and also spend an hour and a half listening to Professor Tim Noakes uh, dispelling the cholesterol myth. It's very important that listeners get their heads around this whole confusing thing about cholesterol, triglycerides, and so on, um, the connection between uh, cardiovascular health and carbohydrate consumption and so on. We could do a whole session on this, but rather than us delving into that right now, I want people to listen to Professor Tim Noakes, who, by the way, I've been following for about 40 years. He is probably the most published exercise physiologist on the planet. He's the man. Go and listen to him. And that will help to um, allay people's fears that eating like cams, <laughs> venison and so on, that it's going to kill them. It isn't. 
it's actually a heart healthy diet when you think about it. Now, here's the really interesting thing. I'm into my 51st year of studying or full-time work in health. Mm. Now, um, a, it started off that a total cholesterol of six, six and a half was um, sort of kind of acceptable. You know, if you're a bit above that, you know, the doc would say, well, you know, it's getting a bit high, Gary, you know. And then it got lowered down to like 5.5 and then it got lowered down to 5 and then it keeps going down. And it's now the the guidelines for cholesterol have been lowered so low, it's like nobody over the age of 50 can possibly achieve it without medication. So you've got all these old men and old women trying to do the limbo, okay? Yeah. How low can you go? Um, and, you know, and they're trying to go, they're going lower and lower and lower, and it's impossible. It can't be done without medication. But here's the other thing, and Professor Noakes will um, help you to allay your fears on this. Guess what? People with high cholesterol live longer, okay? <laughs> There's less dementia and so on. Your brain is 60% fat, cholesterol, and so on. If you put somebody on a cholesterol-free diet or give them drugs that block or interfere cholesterol, you are driving the Alzheimer's and dementia epidemic. Don't worry, Cam, you're not showing any signs of it yet. No. Okay? But there's a number of, um, you know, we're talking about side effects. Statins, except for where there is clearly a rare genetic disorder involving cholesterol, I don't think anybody should be on statins, especially if they want to be physically active. So is that the first thing that I should go and talk to my GP yes. about? And by the way, there is no side effect, uh, rebound effect from stopping taking a statin. So so what okay. that means, what what does that mean? Does that mean you can stop taking it immediately and you don't yes. need to uh, reduce yes. it slowly over time? And no, there's no, no problem at all. Uh, it's a little bit different with the blood pressure medications where you are better advised to do so progressively, yeah. carefully, while monitoring. And in fact, if you want to bump up cholesterol, unhealthy triglycerides and so on, go on a high-carbohydrate diet. No, thanks. Well, I'm, I'm not... Well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm being, I, I've done yeah. that, you know, like, yeah. um, high-carbohydrate diet with bread and um, potatoes and... Yep. Um, all of those sorts of things. Um, it just it, it just makes me feel bloated, yep. um, and uh, you know, not in a good way. I, I look. I, I even change the type of bread that I do. I, I mean, I only have two slices of bread a day. That's it, two yes. slices, and and it's an oat based bread, not a wheat based bread. Although there is yep. wheat in it, but it's reduced. Yep. You're doing it. You're do, you're a as I said, you're a model patient. Yeah, congratulations. And you're for those who want to know what sort of bread I eat, it's the Oatalicious uh, uh, bread. And you know, I'm, I used to look at down my nose at brown bread and think it was you know pretty average until I tasted Oatalicious and I thought, wow, okay, I'm changing to this. You know, so Cam, if you were to ask me in 50 years, how many people have you uh, come across who have an allergy? or a physical intolerance to beef and lamb? No one. I can't think of a Zero. case. Zero. If you were to ask me eggs, fish, shellfish, dairy, then yes, there are, but relatively rare. But and wheat. And wheat. Then if you uh, white meat, fish and, uh, sorry, um, uh, chicken and pork, rare cases. But then when you start moving into the plant realm, then you get the explosion of allergies and intolerances. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So if somebody has um, any issues with poor digestion, histamine reactions to things they eat and so on, one of the most beneficial first moves is to remove most, and in particular, the nightshades, 
many of the leafy greens, you know, yep. your cows and your spinaches and so on, and grains, just about every grain, and also nuts and seeds and that. Um, uh, if you eliminate those or vastly reduce them, then guess what? People tend to do better. It's a paradox. We're, we're taught um, that... You know, it's so wonderful to eat all of these lovely things, make your kale smoothies and that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't really see that as in the in the real world. Okay. No. And by the way, people will say, "Yes, but we have to have the rush of roughage." Well, I'll tell you what: you go and ask any parents of a newborn that's being breast or bottle fed, um, whether or not um, you know the lack of kale and other vegetables and fibre and that. Causes constipation. <laughs> well, k- kale's what cattle eat. Well, you know, we're and even they don't like um, it. We're omnivores. We're the most versatile eaters. But what really sustains us is foods like meat, eggs, um, milk, cheese, and so on. Concentrated nutrients and energy. Yeah. We do not have the digestive systems of a cow. Yeah, and we we can't ignore that. And no. also, we have got many thousands of years of adaptation to cooking, to fire. So we no longer produce certain enzymes because we rely on cooking. We've lost some of those enzymes. Yeah. So that's a really quite an interesting thing. Now, I just want to go back to your hair tissue test. Mm. So, Cam, you were uh, also very low in a little understood mineral called manganese, mm-hmm. which is found in egg yolk and snails. Um, I don't recommend that you go and eat lots of snails. Um, we've well, got there's nothing wrong with snails. I like escargot, well, you know, they're, yeah, they're, well, they're tasty. Okay. Um, well, uh, uh, snails are not that um, available in New Zealand, but if you can find them, go for it. But, um, you know, snails, uh, egg yolk, and then things like sunflower and yeah. avocados and olives and blueberries and so on. But um, the foods are relatively limited. And again, what we see when we're looking at the roles and functions of manganese, it's essential for the functioning of the brain. Yeah. It's essential for the integrity of connective tissue. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about arteries, veins, um, uh, and so on, um, sure, the main focus of manganese on th- is for things like tendons, ligaments, cartilage, and so on, uh, for strong bone. But it also plays an important role, again, in any connective tissue, including veins and arteries. Yep. So here's another one where you are incredibly low. And the other thing about manganese is its role in um, the utilization of or the metabolism of fat, proteins, and carbohydrates, including cholesterol. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you've got incredibly low manganese, then you are not going to be processing fats, carbohydrates, and proteins well. Yeah. Now, there is another mineral that you are also very low in, and that is chromium. Now, Do I have to go and suck on um, toe bars or something like that? uh, (laughs) Well, I don't recommend it. Um, (laughs) What I recommend is bioavailable chromium. And what you do is you eat food where the chromium has been made or put into a form that your body can properly utilize. Okay? Yeah. So chromium as a metal is incredibly toxic. So mm. don't go and suck on a toe bar, right? Okay? So so we've got these yeah. deficiencies um yeah. being shown here. Yeah. Uh, is this catastrophic or can it be reversed? Well, of course it's reversible. Right. Well, this is exactly what I wanted you to say, of course. <laughs> but but um yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so we've got to uh, look at getting these things into my diet uh, yes. through bioavailable methods. Yes. Um but also is it possible that uh, there's something that is causing these things to be retained yes. inside the body? And not showing in in the hair tests that are coming out in the, in the you know in those tests, is it possible that there's an, an organ that might be sucking all these nutrients up and not releasing them? 
Well, um, first of all, um, minerals like chromium, magnesium, calcium, manganese, selenium. If you're under a lot of stress, yeah, whether that's physical, psychological, um, from uh, infections, injuries, over-exercising, um, relationship breakups, mm -hmm. all of these things, they all have the same draining effect on your reserves. Right. Okay. So uh, as you go through this, you'll see a lot of these nutrients are used for energy production, for producing hormones, for producing uh, structures like tendons, ligaments, and yep. muscle, and bone, and brain, and so on. Um, but also neurotransmitters and hormones, okay? Yep. Um, when you have heightened uh, metabolism, like say somebody's going through an enormous amount of stress, these nutrients are mobilized from tissue stores, which might be, um, uh, there may be storages in the kidneys, um, the liver, um, in your bones, and so on. They're brought into circulation so that they can be used for producing these stress hormones or neurotransmitters or for tissue repair and so on. And ultimately, um, some is lost through the bile, through circulation, through the hair, skin and nails from shedding tissue and so on. And the other thing is often when people are under enormous stress, they eat crap food. Okay. It's easy. It's available. They just yeah, they, shovel they, it in they, their face as quick as yes. they can. Yeah. Yeah. The the perfect stress food is um, a burger and chips, um, or potato chips, or a block of chocolate. Okay. Mm. And these are, are, are energy dense but nutrient poor. So when people are stressed and exhausted, they tend, or even just think of the marathon runner. Hey, they'll have the pasta party. Um, they eat gels and uh, energy drinks and so on and so on. And uh, these provide um, sugar hits and uh, so on. Just remember that pasta. Once you, once it hits your saliva, it's converted from starch into glucose. Yeah. And by the way, excess sugar, um, if it's not burned immediately by the body. Stored as it, fat. Yes. So, and if, if uh, glycogen levels are full, if the liver's full, then it gets turned into fat, and you end up with things like fatty liver disease. By the so, way, I've yeah, seen yeah. fatty liver disease in children as young as 10. Yeah. Okay? It used to be an old man's or old woman's disease. Now we're seeing it in adolescent children, and it's the junk food, the carbohydrate-soaked diet. Yeah. Now, when, when we got these tests... You, yes. We had a little chat, uh, you know, I think it was for about half an hour or so, maybe me even been an hour. The thing that you said to me that we should do immediately mm -hmm. was to start uh, making this citrus peel drink yes. that you yeah, recommend. Let's get onto that. So as I said, I found it very tasty, very refreshing, and not at all unpleasant. And I'm not somebody who has normally eaten fruit and vegetables and things like that. I've sort of like, you know, that's what, cows eat and I eat cows but I found this absolutely delightful to drink in fact I, I you know yeah. I'm I'm making up at least three or four jugs a week of yeah. this right so um why did you recommend that I do do that okay. and and all of the things you can and again just for listeners if you do a Google search for Gary Moller citrus peel drink it'll be the top thing. On, on your Google search, go there, and it gives you the ingredients and all the instructions. Yes, and I've just updated that this morning. Mm. So, um, well, first of all, prior to COVID, the lockdown, the prior to the first lockdown, I attended two medical nutrition conferences. And at each one, there, was, uh, there were papers presented on citrus peel. Yeah. Not citrus. Not, uh, not uh, not lemon juice, but citrus peel. Mm. Okay. And it was mind blowing. Um, a doctor presented, for example, a case of a complete cure of terminal cancer from eating lemons. Mm. Okay. And there were also other discussions about the role of. Uh, of it not just as a um, for the prevention and treatment of cancer but also for cardiovascular disease. Yeah. Now, I came out of, the, in particular, I came out of the last one. It was a couple of days before the first lockdown. 
And I thought to myself, this should be the headline news. We should mm. be urging all of New Zealand to go and raid their neighbour's lemon tree and have lemon, lemon citrus peel in their diets. Okay? But there was none. And what I realised, Cam, is the reason why there is so much research into citrus peel is because the rush is on to identify and synthesize the active ingredients to come out with the next billion dollar cancer therapy drug or heart drug or whatever. Okay. Or, or you can just go pinch lemons off the neighbor's tree yeah. and have this yes. lemon drink and not have to pay big pharma for anything. So, so during the lockdown, when I started to realize that there's some real dodgy stuff going on, I wrote my first citrus recipe. I thought, well, why should I play this silly game? I'm just going to put it out there for the public. Now, for listeners, I want you to do your research. I want you to go into Dr. Google, go into Google, just Google citrus peel and type in your favorite disease. I want you to type in cancer. I want you to type in cardiovascular disease. Type in cardiomyopathy. Type in arteriosclerosis. Um, Type in dementia, Alzheimer's, okay? You can do, just do it. And I want you to scroll through there and what it will do is it will blow you away. It'll be wow, wow, wow. Mm. This is amazing. Now, why doesn't your doctor prescribe any of this? You will notice as you do your research that much of this is what your doctor should be reading and is presumably reading. Okay, but your doctor will not prescribe it. Your doctor will only prescribe what is on the Pharmac list of approved medicines. Okay, they're not so, allowed to prescribe anything else, are they? Well, um, the doc that one of the great disasters of the last three years, the COVID era, mm. is that now I used to be the practitioner support for um, interclinical laboratories. So um, I worked for um, a good 10 years um, supporting doctors, nutritionists, naturopaths, and so on um, in the use and interpretation of hair tissue mineral analysis. I, I covered the whole country. I knew all the doctors that were practicing true integrative medicine. Now, many of them, if not most of them, have... Uh, have been fired, silenced, thrown out of the um, thrown out of the profession. Many of them have gone into retirement, handed back their practicing certificates, and so on. Um, uh, we've been decimated. We've lost most of those doctors. Okay, and if you want to, if you don't believe me, just go to NZDSOS. Okay, doctors speaking out with science, and yeah. you will see some of the braver doctors that are not taking this outrage lying down. Now, um, getting back to the citrus, you will see that citrus peel is incredible. Um, citrus peel, if you've got parasites in your gut, I'll tell you what, Cam, you're going to have the cleanest gut. In the, well, let in me the tell top. you something, right? And, and this is a little <laughs> yes, bit squeamish, but when I, when I had, after I drank like the almost like the first glass even yeah. of this. You know, I have a big glass and scull it down. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say that uh, it cleaned me right out, mm. All right? Not in an unpleasant way, but in what I would describe as the heaviest, <laughs> the, the heaviest movements I've ever, I've ever had, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, and since then, uh, I've had no stomach trouble no crook guts, uh, I, I, you know, and I eat a whole lot of different stuff, all the dodgy kebabs and things like that occasionally, um, but I haven't had any crook guts or any health, uh, gut issues since I've been starting to to, to drink this drink. I, I'm a keen gardener, and I like making compost. Mm. One of the problems is that I don't have worms in my compost, and the yep. reason why is because I'm putting citrus in. 
and worms do not like citrus. And if you just think about it, in the world of nature, um, uh, bitter is an antiparasitic. If you look at the most potent antiparasitics, a good rule of thumb is that if it's bitter. So think of Swedish bitters, okay, that, that concoction uh, for gut upsets mm. and so on. Um, if an animal has got a gut infection, they will go and uh, eat bitter plants. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. a good, if you think of like Artemisia, which is a herbal um, uh, antiparasitic, which is effective against COVID, by the way, it is very bitter. Okay. So, so you a, asked me to drink this drink and yeah. uh, keep drinking it. Yes. And you did that because you wanted to straighten uh, out my liver, didn't you? Well, not just that, um, to clean your arteries, um, mm. to keep your brain working so that um, you are coherent when you are hosting your radio programs and so yep. on. The benefits go way beyond just keeping your liver nice and clean. Yeah, um, but it certainly um, there were other ingredients like milk thistle and dandelion, and these do augment liver detoxification. And this is especially important for Cameron because he's on several medications which are toxic to the liver and kidneys. Mm. And so we want to support liver and kidney function. Now, shall we just get to um, potassium? Yes. Oh. Um, now, I should also just point out, I was going to say a little bit about chromium. Mm. One of the things that you can see, a common factor with a lot of these minerals in your hair tissue tests that are too low, they are integral to fat, glucose, and protein metabolism. Yep. So if you're wondering, if you've got an unhealthy cholesterol profile, maybe it's got something to do with this. You haven't got enough of these base nutrients that act as catalysts and so yeah. on um, to allow your body to properly use the nutrients, um, cholesterol and so on, uh, that you're getting through your diet and which your liver makes 70% of anyway. Mm. Okay. So um, I think we should love your liver, support it. Now, right. Good. One of the things as well about atavastatin and these other drugs, even the antidepressant you're on, mm -hmm. um, these are toxic to the kidneys. Right. Your kidneys are very delicate uh, organs. Yeah. They are very easily damaged. Readers or listeners could get onto YouTube and just... Um, Watch some videos about kidney function, okay? It's so this drink is going to help clear those up too. So it's going to clear, yes. help clear out and, the liver, and, help clear out the kidneys. Yes. Kidney yeah. function, the filtration in that is a delicate interplay between the shifting of sodium and potassium ions across the membranes. Yeah. Now, if the uh, kidneys are being clogged up by toxins, okay, metabolic byproducts from uh, these drugs you're taking, then, uh, and by the way, uh, statins can have a direct effect on the kidneys, on kidney function. You may end up with a, an inability of your kidneys to maintain the potassium sodium balance. Mm -hmm. And you will notice that diuretics work by manipulating potassium and sodium. Yeah. Okay. So there's a connection there. Now, um, we can't be sure of the exact mechanism, but hey, if we can't figure out why on earth has Cameron got these um, very strange blood records of, uh, or blood levels of potassium, and he's got mm. to keep taking this potassium supplement, yep. um, then why don't we focus on the obvious, even if we don't fully understand it. Now, the question is, Cam, what would happen to your potassium levels as you titrate down these medications? I'm going to expect, hey, your body's just going to sort it out and it will normalize over time. 
and it may already have normalized. It appears that you you have had an improvement, haven't you, with your potassium levels on what they have been in the past. Would that be yeah, correct? Yeah, so I, I got a, a, a blood test on the 9th of January. It's a usual scheduled blood test. Hmm. Uh, and my potassium was at 3.6, and the normal range is 3.5 to 5.2. Now, for the last five years, my potassium has never been in the normal range. Now, it's at the low end of the normal range, but the only thing that's changed between the test that I had in uh, in October and the cha- and, and the test in, in January is that I've been taking your drink. And... Some of those ingredients, in fact, all of those ingredients should be supportive of liver and kidney function. Yeah. Okay. So we, we won't take credit, but. Um, well, it's a start. I think it's, um, it's an interesting thing to speculate on. And by the way, hey, what's the downside of doing these things? Well, you know, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, there's there's a, a little bit of a time um, issue in making up this drink. Um, you know, it's terrible. It takes about five minutes to make it. Yeah. You know, that, and most of that slicing the lemon up and biffing yeah. the um, tea bags into the into the mix. And so, you know, if you if you don't make this drink up because you think oh it takes too long, well then you're just lazy. You know, yes. and and um, the benefits of it, uh, you know, I've experienced a, a huge change. Now, there's another little ingredient in mm. that that might be particularly interesting to to blokes, is mm. that uh, you've got this new cell um, in there, a liquid, which is essentially fulvic acid. Now, what does that do? Uh, well, it it has a number of um, a, a wide range of benefits, and. Um, uh, again, we could do a whole session on fulvic acid. Um, just just it, a quick overview on that. Yes. Uh, it improves digestion. It nourishes a healthy gut bacteria. It helps the uptake, the transport of nutrients across the cell membrane. Yep. So when you take for, and, and it's rich in minerals and, and various other ingredients, but I think the most exciting thing about fulvic acid itself is that it facilitates the sucking or the transport of nutrients across the cell wall into the cell, but also the shifting of metabolic waste products out of the cell. Yeah. So you have all these wonderful nutrients that you're now adding to your diet. What we have to do is we need to get uh, transport those nutrients across the various cell um, compartments or the sorry body compartments eventually to the cell wall and then through the cell wall and even a step further into the mitochondria mm. okay and fulvic acid facilitates that so you could say that for the nutrients you're taking fulvic acid gives you more bang for your bucks and for blokes there's a number of studies out there that shows that it boosts testosterone. Well, yes, it, it well it boosts. I, I would tell you it boosts everything. Yeah, it's wonderful, and it is argued that the purest fulvic acid comes from the deep south of New Zealand. Yeah, uh, the fulvic acid that is on my website. You need to go to precisionhealthtesting.com. Yep, is um. And you just type in uh, fulvic and you will find it. And that is um, a New Zealand uh, produced product, the purest, richest fulvic acid you'll get anywhere. Yeah, and I just put a splash into the mixture. I I just sort of like randomly splash a a decent helping of it. And it doesn't taste um, uh, bad. It doesn't taint the drink or anything. Oh, it's lovely. It's delicious. I love it, uh, and in fact, um, I had some fulvic acid in my uh, my lemon drink this morning. Yeah, it's refreshing. It's energizing. So, and, so what um, we've seen from my test is that I'm low on a whole lot of things. Yes, that possibly my liver and kidneys, uh, because of the medications I'm on, may not be working particularly well, and so that's why we started I, the the citrus peel drink yeah. to now, clean that up. Uh, there is one other thing which I need to discuss yep. relevant 
which is on this uh, hair tissue test. Mm. Oh, well, there's two things. First of all, what we can say is that it appears that you have no toxins, okay, like lead, mercury, cadmium. There's okay. tiny little bits, but, you know, hey, that's normal. So let's uh, put that aside. We don't have to worry about that um, at all. However, you will see one thing that is sticking up that um, we need to talk about, and that mm-hmm. is phosphorus. Oh, phosphorus. Oh, that, aluminium. Yep. Yeah, don't worry about the aluminium. We'll do a repeat test, and if the aluminium goes up, then we'll talk about it. If it okay. goes down, we won't talk about it. So we've got the phosphorus that's a, a, phosphorus. a skyscraper. Yes, and it is too high. Yep. Um, it's You can say, yeah, but it's only a little bit above the reference or the ideal, but the trouble is, Cam. It's affecting it's the selenium, it's, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's sticking its head up above the general lie of the land. So, so you've got really low. Um, uh, the potassium is a bit on the low side as well. Yeah. I think we've got that under control. So low iron, copper, manganese, zinc, chromium, very low selenium, which is another issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't worry, we're dealing with that. But the phosphorus then goes boom, up very high. Now, What's going on there? I will bring up, uh, we'll again uh, go to our mineral information. Um, Listeners, we're just looking at a chart, and we're going to go to phosphorus. Now, phosphorus is the energy carrier within the cells, okay? Think of the phosphorus match. Phosphorus is high energy. It, it It is the atom which is used by your mitochondria, which are the, they're in every single cell and they are the power generators. They're like the little um, the little hydroelectric power stations, okay, yep. which are gen- generating energy. And the energy is in the form of what is called adenosine triphosphate, okay, ATP for short. And they t- they, your mitochondria, take a molecule called adenosine diphosphate and it adds a few electrons and creates a high energy molecule called adenosine triphosphate. That then migrates around and wherever a an electron or two is required for energy production, it will donate that and it will degrade back down to adenosine diphosphate and then it goes back to the mitochondria to be regenerated again to be uh, a high energy uh, molecule, okay? So, so how do we get that down? Well, uh, let's just talk about statins. Statins destroy mitochondria, okay? And so and and doctors prescribe statins. Yes, and you are on a statin, mm. okay? Now, what statins do is they destroy your hydroelectric power stations, <laughs> Okay, yeah. and the pattern for it, if we see that in action, we see phosphorus being high. Okay, that is not a good sign. It says to me, Cam Slater is bleeding phosphorus. The energy, the energy systems is being dismantled. Yeah. Okay, it's a Russian missile attack on your energy system. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got the idea? Now, yep, yep. so when we're looking at it um, and we go down and we look at the roles and functions of phosphorus, really important. You can see it's so much to do with energy production. Phosphorus is important for bone, okay, calcium phosphate, monobasic, diabasic, and tribasic for bone and teeth and so on. But it's it's so crucial for the production of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, Mm -hmm. okay? And when it is elevated on a hair tissue test, it is frequently indicative of excessive protein breakdown of body tissues, okay? Yeah. In your case, it is not due to toxic metals like lead or cadmium or arsenic because your body is clean with that. So what else could it be? The most common that I've found is statin use. Yeah. Now, look up conditions like, um, just type into Google, statins 
and uh, muscle breakdown. Statins, rhabdomyolysis, okay? Mm -hmm. And you will be shocked. You will understand that statins destroy muscle tissue. And muscle tissue, of course, is extremely rich in mitochondria. Okay? So there's um, uh, a little bit of information for you, and we can see it on this. So our goal is to bring the phosphorus down in line with these other minerals and then march them like soldiers on parade up to the line. Yeah. Okay? Now, you've been in the Army, haven't you? I have. Good. I was as well. And um, when you've got a ragtag bunch of soldiers, the the sergeant has a hissy fit. Okay, <laughs> if yep. if if Gary Moller's got his foot over the line, okay, he will swear black and blue. Now, what do you do? You don't all put your foot on the line. What you have to do is you have to fall back. He'll yell, "Fall back!" And you fall back about a meter. You put hands on shoulders, and then you shuffle everybody yep. forward. Yeah. What we've got to do is we've got to get that phosphorus and magnesium and a couple of other things. We've got to get them to fall back and then we march them forward. Yeah. And that's what we are setting out to do. Okay. And so, by the way, I think you're doing it. We now yeah. need to do a repeat test in say two months from now. Yep. So we do a repeat test in two months now. But what are the, what next steps are you would you oh. suggest? Would you suggest I start? doing your super yes. smoothie and adding yes. some things into that. How much time have we got, Cam? Hey? Uh, hey we've got a few minutes more. It's It's been okay. very interesting. Oh. It always is interesting with you, Gary. But, um, yeah, we've covered the test and the yes. test results. We've covered what causes that. We've covered how we can cleanse the liver yeah. and the kidneys. So I guess a, a brief touch on the next steps. Okay. And then what we'll do in a couple of months' time is we'll have another update for everybody. And we'll yes. say that this is what Cam's been doing. He's, he's added in uh, the super smoothie with these extra ingredients. Okay. So uh, I think Let's if we do just... do this very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, Cam, I want listeners to um, basically go into my website, go into the blog, and you will see very close to the top the super smoothie recipe. Yeah. Right. Um, what I'm trying to do, what I'm, what I'm seeing as my role is to take all of this knowledge and package it up in a way that people can basically put it into use in their daily lives in a practical and affordable way. Yeah. And and I want I don't want people to be um, basically reliant on extremely overpriced and harmful pharmaceuticals yeah. to stay alive. Okay, because so you're, you're so you're recommending yeah. foods and food, food groups food and and supplements yes. uh, that are. Highly bioavailable. Yes. For thousands of years, we've been told, let food be thy medicine, body yep. heal thyself. Now, the super smoothie recipe, you will see a number of ingredients. Now, I'm not recommending that you have all of the ingredients, but I have listed just about all of the important ones. Now, just about all of them are found in whey protein and foods like meat and eggs and yep. dairy. However, in some cases, we want to fortify it so that we give you a really extra good, boost. Oh, yeah, especially if there are health issues. Yeah. Now, let's think about depression. Okay. Mm. You are on an antidepressant. Yeah. Okay. And it's one of the hardest to come off that one, by well, the way. I've had two goes at it and it's uh, the, quite difficult. The trouble with, um, uh, and uh, we haven't got time to go into it, no. but um, but it can, uh, with an SSRI, if you've been on it for any period of time, the symptoms of withdrawal can persist for as long as a year or even more, mm. right? Mm. I think we can, uh, we, can alleviate, we can expedite that. But now I want listeners to go into Google again and type in NAC or N-acetylcysteine, but just type NAC. Yep. NAC and the words, keywords like depression. Yeah. NAC depression. NAC anxiety. Yeah. NAC suicide ideation. That's a really good one. Okay. So think of all of those teenagers that want to kill themselves. Yeah. Okay. Are self-harming and so on. 
Now, what you will see is, um, like, for example, Psychiatric Times, the one, the magazines your psychiatrist is reading, mm -hmm. okay? And it will, you will see a headline, NAC, the novel nutrient that turns psychiatry on its head or something like that. You'll see that headline. I wouldn't yeah, even... he, 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 Here's a headline, yeah, NAC as a novel rapidly acting anti-suicidal agent. Yes, so... If somebody is uh, has got it in their heads, obsessive thoughts, I want to kill myself, or they've got, you know, uh, you know how you can get something in your head and you just can't yeah, you fixate just, on it, and it, oh, it's makes... fixating and it's negative and it's horrible. Yeah. Okay, NAC within about an if you give somebody a good dose of NAC, then within about an hour and a half, there is a clinically significant reduction in those uh, suicidal thoughts or negative thoughts or self-harming yep. thoughts, okay? It's mind-blowing. Again, as you go through that, you will go, wow, this is amazing. Why didn't my doctor tell me? Mm. Okay, now, I want you to then go and type NAC and COVID survival. Yep. And what you will find is that um, NAC reduces covid deaths by up to 80% which is okay. which is what which is why NAC was attacked by big pharma during the covid and, yes it is immensely more effective than the vaccine yeah now if you then vaccine's google vaccines a bit of a bit of a misnomer really God, yeah. Oh, well, but anyway, I, we won't get into that. Yeah. So you, yep. so you've got yep. this super smoothie thing, yes. and one of the ingredients there is NAC amongst a whole lot of others. So you're mm -hmm. saying you can pick and choose some of these. Some will be more important for you, depending on on what you need. But yes. NAC, you should include that, in, in, in it's a powder. You can you've got it, haven't you, as a powdered yes. form, which makes it more uh, readily. Uh, you know, it's not a tablet or anything. You just mix it in with the with the yeah. whey powder and uh, everything powders, else. Powders, uh, as a rule of thumb, are always cheaper mm. than uh, the tableting. So that's yeah. that's the first thing. Um, and uh, and look, um, you can do the same search. I want you to do the same search for taurine. Mm. Okay? And by the way, you can with NAC, you can also type NAC FDA ban. And you'll see that the FDA is doing everything they can to ban it. And New Zealand has tried through their Therapeutic Products Act, mm. okay, which we must not allow to re-emerge. No. Now, um, but you can type taurine, and you can even type in taurine and heart failure. Okay, mm. do that. Have a look. Now you will see. Wow, this is incredible. Okay, now if you combine all of that with having your citrus peel drink, you are really covering, and, and you can type in taurine, Alzheimer's, taurine's nerve regeneration for peripheral neuropathy and so on. Look, um, there's so much there. Um, where I can help is with um, whittling down what are the key ingredients, the most important ingredients for you. But the problem I've got is, especially with COVID, mm -hmm or should I say COVID prevention programs, yep. is that we are so busy we can't cope with the workloads. Mm. The number of sick people out there has exploded, okay? But that is all the more reason why we've got to get this message out that um, the solution is by investing in the basics of health, which is what this whole discussion has been yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah. These it's things, a journey, isn't it, that yeah. that I'm on under your yep. guidance and, and yep. to well, eat better, to put better things into my body and get better health results, which will then reduce my need to rely on big farmers. Uh, well, well, I won't call yep. them solutions because they're not. Well, they're really yeah, Band-Aids. Uh, Kim, let's be clear. You suffered a catastrophe. Yeah, I did. And, and that is when... Uh, modern medicine is at its best, okay? They yep. saved your life. Yep. Right. However, uh, where modern medicine is a complete and utter failure is when it comes to the prevention and um, yep. the, the the long-term um, restoration of health. Okay? Yeah, and, that, and so, that's my focus is I want, yep. to, I want to repair yep. the damage and I want to 
mitigate this ever happening again. And the way to do that is to get everything in balance, which is why we're doing all of this. I absolutely do not want listeners to think that this is anti-medicine. No. This is the best time in the history of humanity to be alive, because if you get it run over by a bus, if you ha have a out-of-control infection, or if you suffer a massive heart attack or stroke, this is the best time. Yeah, but and, 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 and in my personal situation here, Gary, Right, I needed some of these drugs absolutely to to keep me alive. But I'm out now at the point where I've you know I've got through the dangerous period, exactly. And so and so now I can concentrate to slowly but surely be able to augment my system, my body in such a way that I may be able to reduce or remove entirely the necessity for those drugs because they're no longer going to keep me alive. It's actually my change in lifestyle that's keeping me alive. Exactly. It is um, the where to now and yeah. for the next 55, 60 years of your life. So, so you're going to send me a, a recipe of, yep. of the things that I need to get, you know, to go in with this whey protein. Yes. And then in a couple of months' time, we'll touch base again after we've done another uh, another test, and then it'll be interesting to see what happens from that. You're going to be so incredibly healthy. Good, that's what I want. And uh, you know, th this is the thing that I've I've learned with my stroke journey is that you know what listeners need to understand is if you have a stroke, there's no government support mm. at all. There's no ACC. Unless it happened on a on a, a surgery table or as a result directly res, as a result of an accident, right? You get nothing mm. from the state. And to be frank, you know, uh, if you're relying on the state for your health, then that's not a good plan. So you have to rely on yourself, and you have to be self motivated to learn the things that I'm learning and sharing with you all. And the things that Gary knows and he's sharing, and that's why we're doing this show, because it's not just politics, because if I don't do these things, I'm not going to be around to commentate on politics in 20 years' time or 30 years' time. Uh, I'll have expired in an untimely way, and, and I know that my mere existence annoys some people, and I want to keep on annoying them for a good long time. I think that's a really good note to finish on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, we've we've talked and talked, but... The, the thing is, Gary, it's, it's hugely fascinating and learning all of this stuff uh, makes you feel better. It uh, certainly increases your brain power, uh, your ability to think about complex things and all of those sorts of things. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that we will continue throughout the year to share with our listeners so that they can learn for themselves and, and start to take an interest in looking after yourself because if nobody else has your best interests at heart. Only you do. And uh, and that's why I'm sharing this, so that people can learn so they don't end up like me, so they don't have a catastrophic failure in their brain or their heart or whatever. Well said. Because it, well it's not pleasant. right? And let me tell you, a stroke doesn't hurt, right? It didn't hurt at all, mm. right? What hurt was the frustration uh, of, of essentially instantly becoming a cripple. And being told by the medical professionals, you'll never do something again. Right? Now, that, that's a red rag to a bull for me because I say never say never, right? And, and, and it motivated me to prove them wrong. And I've proved them wrong, and I'm continuing to prove them wrong, but I'm doing it in a studied, considerate uh, way in conjunction with, you know, I still talk to my GP about this. So, you know, they know things that I don't know. Um, I know things that they don't know. So between the two or three of us that are working on this with you, Gary, and my GP, we're going to solve this riddle. We're going to fix the potassium problem. I know we are uh, eventually. And uh, and my health's going to be better, and you're going to be listening to me on Reality Check Radio for another 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, thanks for your time, Gary. It's been a, a great update to share those uh, results and those tests mm -hmm. with listeners. And, uh, you know, you and I'll um, touch base regularly offline about blood pressure and, and you're going to give me a recipe for a protein shake that matches what, what my goals are um, and what, what I want to achieve. Uh, and then 
we'll see what it's like in a couple of months' time um, after I've done all of that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I may be bouncing around the room talking to you, but uh, yeah, that's what that's what we'll do, and uh, we'll touch base. So, thank you for your time today and uh, dealing with these complex issues in a simple and easy to understand manner. You're a champion. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, as always, Gary has a lot to say, but he always provides fascinating insights into health, and I've seen a huge improvement in my health since following his advice. I recommend seriously that you embark on your own health discovery and find out what works for you. No one cares more about your health than you. Tell me your thoughts on what Gary had to say by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thank you for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. If you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to, either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We would love to hear from you, so connect with us today.